Hey KAO team and family, it's Mr. Thompson. Welcome to Wednesday's lesson. For today, we're going to analyze the ways in which a story's setting, characters, and plot affect one another, including how the main character develops or changes in response to the conflict. In other words, today we're really going to be looking at and analyzing the way that plot, setting, and character interact in a literary text. For today's lesson, you just need two things, access to Google Classroom and a computer, smartphone, or tablet to do your work on. Key points for today's lesson. Today, we're going to work on a lesson about analyzing story elements and how they influence one another. We will focus specifically on plot, character, and setting. Analyzing the inter interactions between a story's setting, characters, and plot will help you better understand and appreciate the stories that you read. Setting, character, and plot, they're all considered story elements. It's important to understand that story elements are dependent on one another. That means they influence one another in a text. Today, we're gonna to learn about how each of these story elements specifically influence one another, and that's gonna help us better understand these complex texts that we're working. So, some key vocab for today's lesson. We have plot, setting, character, conflict, and resolution. Plot is the events of a story. Setting is where and when a st story takes place. Character are the people or animals in a story. Or another way to say that would be who the story is about. Conflict is the problem in a story and resolution is how that problem is solved. A story would not be complete or interesting to read without all the parts working together. These parts called story elements include its character, setting, and plot. Analyzing a story means figuring out how these elements work together. For example, you can analyze how the setting of a, a story shapes its plot. A story's plot includes its conflict or a problem the characters must respond to. And a resolution is the way in which that problem or conflict is solved. So for today's model, I want you guys to open up your document. And we're going to start today out by looking at this illustration from a cartoon. So what I want you to do is just observe the illustration. Think about what's going on. Think about plot setting, and characters, and then read the caption. Okay, so I want you to think about the character's problem and the role that the setting plays in that problem. Next, I want you to think about what actions the characters can take to bring themselves to safety. Let's use this graphic organizer for tracking our ideas. Before I start, I'm gonna look at the illustration again. This is gonna count as my second read. So I'm gonna go back and observe. Huh, so as I observe this illustration, I can see that the setting is a school for dogs. And I noticed that because there's a desk in here there's a clock on the wall. This looks like a classroom setup. And then outside, I can see the sign for the school, okay? It's Canine Obedience School. An obedience school is where dogs go to be trained um, and it generally corrects bad behaviors that the dog is demonstrating. So an obedience school is a place that dogs wouldn't necessarily, necessarily wanna go, okay? So I think the conflict to here is the dogs don't want to be in obedience school. They really want to go outside and play. The characters in the story, we have the dogs who are the students. And right here you can see is the teacher. And what's funny about the teacher, or interesting about the teacher, is she's tied up. Now, if I look at this, I'm going to make an inference that the dogs tied up the teacher in order to escape from the school. Let's put those ideas into the graphic organizer. So, setting, obedience school for dogs. 
the relationship between the setting and the conflict, the setting creates the conflict. The dogs are unhappy in the obedience school, so they stage a, res a revolt and tie up their teacher. How do you think the characters will resolve the conflict? The dogs will escape the school and go outside to play with the ball. Okay, so to continue with the model, we're going to look at this story. Okay, this is called Black Sunday by Taryn Trina. Uh, this is a uh, considered a work of historical fiction. Um, I want you guys to analyze how the story elements come together to shape the story. Black Sunday tells a memorable tells about a memorable day in history when a powerful dust storm hit the southern Midwest. Read along in your document as I read the story out loud. Black Sunday by Taryn Trina. It was April 14th, one day before Cora's 16th birthday, and she felt the air change as she took the laundry down from the clothesline. The sky darkened over the Oklahoma plains, and the wind threatened to blow the laundry away. Cora froze for a moment, and then shouted, dust storm, loudly enough for everyone inside to hear. Cora held the cellar door open for her mother and the younger children as they descended into the cool darkness. Cora's mother called for her to join them, but Cora was determined to find her father and brothers. Cora saddled the old mare and rode across the fields, calling for her father until she finally spotted him. He was already riding back with her brothers, the storm creeping up the horizon nearly fast enough to overcome them. They tethered the animals in the barn stalls and sealed the doors to keep the precious livestock safe. So, if I think about setting here, the second sentence says, the sky darkened over the Oklahoma Plains. So I know this story takes place in Oklahoma and on the Plains. Later, in the third paragraph, Cora rides across the fields and helps her dad and brothers bring their livestock to safety in the barn. Based on these details, I can also guess that the story takes place on a farm. Next, I'm gonna look at the story's conflict. I know that a conflict is a major problem that one or more characters must struggle with. I see that Cora's main concern right away is the safety of her mother and younger siblings as the dust storm approaches. So keeping that in mind, I'm gonna look at this graphic organizer right here. Okay, what is the setting of the story? What is the conflict in the story? Describe the relationship between the setting and conflict in the story use details to support your answer. So, setting is a farm on the Oklahoma Plains. The conflict or the problem in the story is a powerful dust storm has moved across the plains. It is dangerous and the characters must respond to this danger. The relationship between setting and conflict in the story is the approaching storm creates conflict for the family by putting them in danger. Excellent. Now, for your check for understanding today, you guys are going to be answering a question on the rest of the story, which we are going to read together. But before we start this read, I want to go over the CFU question with you so you know what to look for as we read together. So, your CFU question for today. Which sentence in the passage best shows that Cora's ability to take charge in a dangerous situation will lead to a happy resolution. Now, it's important to remember, a resolution is how the conflict or problem in a story is solved, okay? And if I think about the dangerous situation they're talking about, hmm, I know the dangerous situation must be this the conflict that we discussed in the last slide. The conflict is a dust storm is approaching and the whole family is in danger. So, keeping that in mind, Let's finish the story together. All right. What about your mother and the other children? Her father shouted over the increasing roar of the wind, clearly alarmed. They're already in the cellar, Cora answered. Follow me, everyone. We can make it, but we have to move now. Soon they were all together, huddled around the lamp as the storm rattled the boards of the house overhead. The day would later become known as Black Sunday because of the epic storm that blew over the plains. But Cora would remember it best as the day before her 16th birthday when she helped lead her family to safety. 
So let's look at this CFU question again, okay? Now, for today's CFU, I want you to consider each answer choice to the multiple choice question and eliminate those that are obviously incorrect. Remember, you need to find a sentence that both shows Cora taking charge and suggests a happy resolution. The incorrect answer choices show either one or the other, but not both. So I want you to pause the video right now and, an and answer the CFU. We're going to go over the correct response once you come back. So pause your video right now. All right, guys, welcome back. For our CFU today, the correct answer is answer choice C, okay? Now, I'm gonna go through all of these and we're gonna talk about why C is the best choice. So, answer choice A is incorrect because this sentence shows Cora taking charge but does not suggest a happy resolution or ending to the story. Choice B is also incorrect. This shows Cora opening a door but it does not necessarily suggest her taking charge or it doesn't show any kind of happy resolution or ending to the story. Choice C is correct. It shows Cora taking charge and also indicates a happy resolution. Choice D is incorrect because this sentence suggests neither Cora taking charge or a happy resolution. Okay, four. Your guided practice today. You're going to be reading a story that transports you back in time to the 16th century in London. As you read, look at character, plot, and setting, and make sure you have a firm grasp on those three story elements before you start answering the questions. So just some background for the text you're going to be reading, okay? So this is from The Prince and the Pauper which is by Mark Twain. It's a very famous American author. In this scene, a beggar boy sets off a surprising chain of events at a London castle in the year 1547. As you read, think about how the setting, characters, and plot interact and use the note catcher provided in your document to jot down important details, okay? So I've kind of gone through this for you guys, this is some background building just to really help us better understand the text as we read. So we've got Tom, the, in terms of characters, we've got Tom, who's the main character, the guards, and then a prince. For the setting, we have London, London Castle in 1547. The plot, a beggar tries to interact with the prince, guards intervene, but the prince stops them and leads the beggar into the castle. So, with that background in mind, what I want you guys to do right now is do your guided practice, okay? Um, in closing, just gonna review key points again, okay? Uh, setting, character, and plot are all considered story elements. It's important to understand that story elements are dependent on one another. They influence one another in a text. And um, it's really important that we master this skill of looking at interactions in the text because it's gonna help us better understand and appreciate everything that we read. Um, so work through the next, the next three questions in your document and submit when, you, when complete. All right, the first two questions are S back to line and are multiple choice. I just want you to highlight the correct answer choice for those. The third question is short answer. Please respond in at least five sentences and use evidence in your writing. So that's the conclusion of today's lesson. Let's have a great day of learning today. Thank you so much for your time. Please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions or comments. And hopefully I'll see all of you in office hours later on today. Thanks everybody. Have an awesome day.